kinesthetics tend to talk much, much, much slower than any of the other two preferences. They use very few gestures because they're experiencing their feelings. And they tend to sort of sit a bit lower down. You can see it in their physiology. They tend to look a bit more comfortable or just a bit more aware of how they actually feel inside. And they use very feeling touch-oriented words. Things like, yeah, I just need to get a more concrete example on that. Uh, because this just boils down to one thing. Or I really need to, I, I don't quite get a sense of what you're saying. I really wish you would just lay your cards on the table. So kinesthetic people tend to, like I say, they use very few hand gestures, their speech is much, much slower, they breathe lower down, and they use very feeling or touch-oriented words like all washed up, get to grips, boils down. You can see those words and phrases up there. And I've got to be honest, they tend to drive me crazy sometimes. <laughs> because I tend to be very visual a lot of the time, so I speak faster and I use very visual oriented words. So when I speak to someone who has a kinesthetic preference, the key is to begin to, uh, to begin to pace their ongoing reality, to begin to go to their level, begin to slow down my speech, use less gestures, breathe a bit more deeper and begin to use kinesthetic sounding words because by doing that you you are essentially speaking their language now I know some people get a bit concerned about this they think that just because you're changing and being flexible in this way that means that you're changing yourself it's not really you're still being yourself you're just changing the style that you present yourself to someone it's kind of like if you go on holiday um, it's usually fairly accepted that if you um, try and speak a bit of their language, then they'll respect you a bit more. It's not that you're changing who you are, you're just being respectful, you're just entering the person's world and then beginning to speak to them in a way that really fits with what their ongoing experience is. So this is very, very useful when you are in some kind of communication situation and the key is to begin first of all just to become aware of which mode a person's in, whether they're in, a, they're in a very visual mode, whether they're in a kinesthetic mode, or whether they're in an auditory mode. And then begin to go into that mode yourself as you're beginning to explain something. If you're training, if you're giving a presentation, it's very useful to go through all three of these modes because you will have some people who are very visual in the audience, you will have some people who are very auditory, and you'll have some people who are very kinesthetic as well. Okay, so here's a great exercise that you can do to begin to recognize this stuff and start to become skilled in switching through different representational systems so that you can begin to uh, create a sense of rapport and a sense of trust with various different types of people. Um, what you want to do is, if you have a partner when you're working with this, then that's fantastic. If not, then you can do it just as you're speaking to a friend or a work colleague. Um, or a partner, really, it really doesn't matter. What you want to do is you want to casually ask them about something that they have bought in the last six months. It could be a holiday, it could be a car, it could be an item of clothing. Um, you could subtly weave the conversation onto the topic of holidays uh, and ask them about a previous holiday that they've had or uh, a holiday that they've had that they've really enjoyed in the last few years. Then what I want you to do is just begin to ask questions that make the experience more real for them and begin to see if you can figure out if the decision that they made was mostly visual, uh, mostly auditory, or mostly kinesthetic. For example, say they bought a car. If it was a predominantly visual decision, then it will be the way the car looked. So it will be perhaps the colour of the car, or how they thought that other people would perceive them as they drove past them in the car, something like that. It could be if the interior looks really nice or the dashboard. Um, that Those are predominantly visual decisions. If it was auditory, it could be the sound of the engine. Um, if It could be what the salesperson said to them or what other people would say about them if they knew that they had this particular car. If it was kinesthetic, then 
it could be more about um, the way the car felt, how comfortable the interior was, or what it was like, the feeling of acceleration as they drove the car, the experience that they, that they had when they were driving it. So have a conversation with them, and ask some questions to make the experience more real for them, and then begin to see if you can find out if the decision was mostly visual, mostly auditory, or mostly kinesthetic. You'll probably find that it will have elements of all three, but there'll be one that was more important than the other three. Also, a really good thing to do is practice switching between modes. Another really good thing to do is to write out scripts of how you would speak to a visual person, how you would speak to an auditory person, or how you'd speak to a kinesthetic person, and how you'd combine all three. Because the more flexibility that you have in this way, the more you will be able to relate to different types of people and begin to go into an auditory mode or go into a kinesthetic mode if you're speaking to that type of person. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed this brief introduction to NLP. This is really just scratching the surface of a, an absolutely phenomenal technology uh, that you really want to go away and learn. If you want to find out some more about it, we run NLP training courses, practitioner courses, master practitioner courses, but also very short introductory courses if you want more of a taste into how you can begin to use this stuff in your everyday lives. Um, to check out these courses and for some more information, go across to www.solutionsinmind.net or www.nlptrainingscotland.net. Um, you can always drop me an email at info at solutionsinmind.net.